So welcome everyone. Um, welcome to this presentation about what's new in the inventory uh, Odoo V12. Um, my name is Michael and I work as a functional consultant uh, at Odoo. Uh, it's been now my fifth uh, Odoo experience. I'm really glad to see that there are more and more people uh, coming to this great event. So what are we going to see today? Uh, first, we are going through a small introduction of what are the new features in Odoo uh, V12. We will then see what are the use cases that I decided to take uh, to present the new flows that you can apply uh, into Odoo. And then we will go, of course, through a small uh, demonstration of these new features uh, that are available in Odoo V12. Um, of course, there'll be a time at the end of the presentation so that you can ask any question that you might have, and I'll try, of course, to answer uh, them all. So uh, first, I wanted to present uh, some of the new uh, features that have been uh, introduced in Odoo V12. As you know, there have been a revamp of the application in uh, V11, really to build a better structure uh, for future uh, versions. And now the focus has been on adding new features and improving, of course, uh, the usability of the application itself uh, to make it more user-friendly and to uh, give the access to the users, to the end users, uh, to more advanced uh, features. Uh, of course, uh, the first uh, main feature that you can think of is the IoT box. Uh, you've seen the presentation from Laura just before. I'm not going to explain uh, in more details what you can expect from it, but basically, it means that you'll be able uh, to connect any device from your manufacturing chain or from your inventory to the Odoo backend and collect any information uh, that you need and uh, input it in your Odoo database. So, of course, the IoT box is one of the important features uh, that is uh, brought with the Odoo uh, version 12. The other uh, feature that you can think of is the revamped uh, barcode app. So uh, the idea here is that there are no uh, really extra behaviors uh, that have been added, although I could mention, for instance, the fact, the fact that you can now um, scan a lot directly and you don't need to scan the product and then the lot. So you, you save scans when you use uh, the barcode app now. But what they did is really to rethink the interface of the barcode app itself so that the operator in the inventory can focus really on the actions and the behaviors that he, that he needs to focus on. So uh, he will have a clear uh, way of seeing which products he needs to pick, in which order he needs to pick those, and really he will directly see on the screen uh, what are the actions that he performs. So for that, of course, I would invite you to see more detailed presentations, such as the one from Oriane, uh, beginning of the afternoon, or the one from Nicola, uh, at the end of the afternoon to get uh, more information about that uh, revamped uh, barcode app. And then another feature that you can uh, think of in the inventory application uh, of Odoo is that we have now uh, an inventory dashboard that is directly available uh, to the user uh, so that you can track, for instance, the delays that you might have in the deliveries or the receipts with your suppliers. You can also track the cycle times that you have, so you can track any important KPI that you can think of uh, in the inventory directly through this dashboard, and of course, filter the information over a certain time frame. So it could be uh, a week, uh, a month, or a year, and you can make comparisons. So you can compare one period to another like you would do in the financial reports in the Odoo Accounting app. So that's really uh, helpful when you want to uh, create uh, a clear reporting dashboard uh, of your inventory uh, and of your warehouse, of course. Uh, but again, I would invite you uh, to see the presentation from Najla this afternoon, uh, who is going to present the, the dashboards in Odoo, and uh, you will get more details about that. Uh, so you, you might be wondering, OK, he's uh, presenting a lot of features, referring to other talks. What is he going to present then? Uh, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, uh, there has been a revamp of uh, Odoo V11 which means that, for instance, they worked on a better structure uh, and they separated in two layers uh, the inventory so that you can deal with your physical quantity on one side and on your valuation on the other side. So that was really undercover uh, features that were uh, improved. But now, with V12, the product owner's team is responsible for uh, the, infor the inventory decided to focus on uh, new features and also usability improvements, which means that 
I'd like to focus uh, my presentation on, on the subtle improvements uh, that will make a huge difference uh, for the end uh, user. And one of them, in my opinion, is the fact that it will be way easier with Odoo V12 to uh, configure the routes uh, within the inventory. For instance, you now have a neat interface uh, to decide uh, which resupply routes you are going to apply uh, on your warehouse, so you don't have to bother about uh, which resupply route am I activating, uh, do I have to set a default warehouse, this is over. You can clearly see now what are the routes that you are going to, uh, to apply uh, directly on the warehouse form. You also have now out-of-the-box uh, manufacturing steps, which means that you can, um, you can decide, for instance, to have a two-steps manufacturing process where you'll first uh, pick the components and then uh, manufacture the product itself. Uh, and you can directly do that uh, from the warehouse form. We will see that later. Uh, it means that you don't have uh, to uh, use hard-coded routes like in the past, and it was very difficult to hook yourself onto uh, some procurement location in the production location, for instance. So now you really have uh, a better way to handle uh, these procurements uh, in the routes configuration. Also, uh, you have no merged uh, push and pull routes, which means that you can, uh, with only one rule, uh, deal with uh, push and pull flows at the same time. So for instance, it can happen that you have a product where you want to uh, sometimes push the product by creating a, a manual purchase order that would send the product to a quality control area, but sometimes you'd like also to trigger that flow when you have a reordering rule applied onto the product. So you want to combine at the same time some push and pull strategies, and that's uh, what is interesting with that uh, merge of uh, the two actions into one rule, you, you decrease the number of rules that you have to configure. And then also next to, um, next to the, the root configuration, you have some tool tips uh, that will help you understand actually uh, the, the route that you are uh, trying to configure uh, at, at the moment. This is, uh, there is this and there is uh, also another uh, great addition to the roots configuration is the fact that now you have a 2D uh, visual representation of what you are doing. So you can directly analyze uh, on the product uh, all the routes that are applied uh, look like, which means that you can see if you have any missing routes in your configuration, if you have any conflicts uh, in the routes that you have configured. So we'll see that uh, just afterwards, but that's really a, a good tool for you uh, in terms of configuration and spotting the missing link in your warehouse network. Um, so let's see a bit what are the use cases that I would like to use. So here, as you can see, uh, I've decided to work with a cabinet maker, an SME, which is a cabinet maker. And the first process that they would have uh, is the fact that they want to pick and manufacture uh, at the same time. We will, so we will see, or you can have a pre-production uh, stock location where you are going to first send the products and then directly manufacture the product, uh, the finished product from uh, pre-production to, uh, to stock. Um, the second use case that I wanted to show you is the configuration of a, of a merged uh, push and uh, pull rule. So we will see how you can easily have a quality control uh, area. Uh, and uh, finally, I wanted also to review with you what are the different uh, inter warehouse flows uh, that you can configure and or you can uh, track any problem that you might have through the 2D, 2D uh, visual representation. So let's move uh, to the demonstration. So here I'm in uh, the Odoo V12 uh, application and as you can see I can directly uh, connect here uh, to the inventory and if I go in the configuration in my warehouses you can see here that I have a central one and two warehouses dedicated to uh, specific stores. And if I go on the central warehouse, uh, you now see if I edit it that next to the uh, manufacturer uh, option, I now have the possibility to select the number of steps that I want to apply to my manufacturing process. So for instance, I can decide to say, I will do it in two steps, uh, which means that I will first pick the components, and then uh, send uh, the components uh, to a pre-production area, and then I will 
uh, consume my components during the manufacturing process in that pre-production area. So I will just uh, save the option on the central warehouse and I will go then uh, in my master data on the product level and for instance here I have a table to be produced and as you can see I will apply the manufacturer route here onto this product. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use that new button which is on top of the product form, which is the replenish button, which allows you in fact to create a procurement in any location at any given time. So for instance, I'm saying I want to generate a procurement for one unit of uh, the table product in my central warehouse. So I can uh, confirm that. And then I'm going to check in uh, the manufacturing app what's the result of that. And as you can see, I have here a manufacturing order that has been generated. And if we check uh, in the MISC, uh, in the MISC uh, tab, that the raw materials will come from that pre-production area. And if I check here on the smart button in the, in the right corner, I can see that I have a picking which has been created and that will uh, ask my operators to go and pick uh, from stock first the components to the pre-production area. So as you can see, in one click, I can quickly have a two steps uh, manufacturing operation uh, configured. Okay, so that's, that's just uh, an easy configuration, of course. Now I'm interested in uh, configuring a quality control area at the entrance of my warehouse. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, create a location at the entrance. And uh, yeah, so an internal location. And I'm going to uh, set up a new route uh, to handle uh, that quality control area. So I will call it quality control uh, first. Oops. And as you can see now, you don't have anymore the two sections that you had before with the push and the pull rules. Now you can uh, directly create uh, a single uh, rule that will apply for both the push and pull processes. So for instance, I want to uh, first uh, create the move between the quality control area and the stock. So I will uh, select the action pull and push. I will do it with an internal transfer. Uh, yeah, with an internal transfer. And uh, my source location will be uh, quality control uh, area. So as you can see here, um, you can see here uh, that it will explain what I'm currently doing. So as I said, you have a self-explanatory description next to the route that you are configuring. So it tells me when products are needed in CWH stock, an internal transfer will be created from the control area to fulfill the need. So it automatically explains you what you are tr uh, trying to configure. And as you can see here, because I've selected the pull and the push process, it also tells me that I have a push uh, operation that will be uh, created every time I have products coming in uh, the quality control area base. Uh, also, I'm going to say that I want to trigger another rule and that other rule will be uh, buying from the supplier. And here, the usual option that you have, the buy one, I will do it with a receipt and my location will be a quality control area base. So basically, when I have a need in the quality control, I will create a request for quotation for that product. So you can simply save the route like this. You go on your product, and here I will apply it, for instance, um, yeah, let's say on the cabinet here, and I will uh, select the different routes that I want to apply. So for instance, I want it to be make to order, it, which means that every time I sell to a customer, I want to order it uh, to the supplier and I will apply the new route that I have just configured. And here, as you can see, uh, I have a new smart button on the product form uh, that uh, gives me the possibility to see uh, the routes that are applied on the product. So I can directly check uh, what I have done and what will be the routes uh, that will be applied. And here, as you can see, uh, I can see that first the make to order will be applied and since it's a rule that will trigger another rule, I have the, 
the two dashes here, that shows me that something should follow uh, that route. And as you can see here, I have the operation that I just created uh, between CWH stock and the quality control area. And in the quality control area, I will uh, trigger uh, the, the, the procurement and the purchase to my supplier. So as you can see, the location are ordered from vendor location to the customer locations with the internal ones uh, in between. And the order in which uh, the system will show me the different uh, rules that I have, uh, of course, is based on the priorities that you have on the rules. So basically, we start first with the routes on the sales order lines, then the products, then the product categories, and then the warehouse itself. So first here, I have the route that is applied uh, on the product directly. So I can uh, save that configuration, and then I can simply go uh, in the sales uh, app. I will sell to the customer A. I will add a product, so the cabinet that I just uh, configured. So I will just sell uh, one unit. And I can confirm. As you can see, I already have uh, two moves that have been created here, one to the partner location and one to stock. And if I check the internal move, I have uh, a move between stock and quality control area. It also means that if I check in the purchase app, I now have a purchase order, a request for quotation for that product, and I can confirm the order directly. And it means that I now have a receipt uh, in the right location. So um, as you can see, I can quickly configure new routes uh, using uh, the merged actions uh, on the routes. And then what I can do as well is that on the warehouse, on the central warehouse, um, on the store warehouse, I can, for instance, decide to apply a resupply route uh, from the central warehouse. It will automatically configure that resupply route, and then I can go again on the product form. Uh, this time I can apply that on the, on the wood panel. And here I can use, again, the 2D representation to see if I'm applying the route uh, correctly. So here, for instance, I can say uh, I want to apply make to order only at the moment, and if I check the 2D visual representation, uh, I'll see that, I'll ha that I have a missing link. So for instance, here, I see that I have uh, a, a make to order rule uh, that is applied on the product, but nothing uh, follows uh, that rule. So I can tell that I have a missing link here uh, in the rules that I have applied on the product. So for instance, I can go back here, I can apply the manufacturer on uh, the product itself, and then uh, I will see that uh, the missing link that I had here is now applied through the manufacturing rule. So the 2D representation really helps you uh, understanding what's missing uh, in the rules that you have configured. Um, so that's, that's the demonstration, and I just wanted to uh, wrap it up uh, quickly before having some questions. So I think the 2D representation of routes will be very good for you to spot the missing routes that you have in the networks uh, of warehouses that you are building. It can help you also to understand the conflicting routes that you might have, and it will, of course, help you to build up uh, a route network very easily. And also you've seen that now, out of the box, you have uh, more facilities uh, to configure um, to configure the routes. And as you, can, as you can see, there are other uh, features that I invite you to come uh, and ask me more questions about, such as the replenish button, the fact that you can now move entire packages, that you have a clear stock valuation, and that uh, the batch picking report, for instance, has been improved, etc., etc. So don't hesitate to ask uh, questions. So I don't know if you have any questions so far. I think I'm a bit uh, behind, so I invite you maybe to ask the questions when I'll be uh, out of the room. So, thank you very much. <laughs>